Hey guys, I just wanted to throw out an encouragement there that I have been encouraged by yesterday um, in, in my devotion time. And my husband and my family and I, we watched this movie called Daniel. And I I don't know who wrote it. I should... It was on Pure Flix. The Daniel that's on Pure Flix. Um, I don't even know the... What's his... You know, the actor. I don't know, guys. Maybe I'll try to link it below. But I really appreciated this version of Daniel because it shows him going through the three different um, kings and the kingdoms um, spoken to God in a dream through Nebuchadnezzar. Not, I'm sorry, not all of those kingdoms were represented, but the Babylonian and the Medes and the Persian. And that's where um, Dan, Daniel got through them for Babylon, the conquest of Jerusalem with Nebuchadnezzar, all the way down to um, Cyrus. And so... It was just a kind of just an, a reminder of how clearly God speaks to our leaders, how clearly God comes in and how important it is, like Daniel, for us to purpose in our hearts, not to be defiled by this world. That as we walk with God and we talk with God and we hang out with the Lord and we are reading his word and we're worshiping him, he reveals, it says that God is the revealer of secrets. God will reveal this just amazing things to us. And I was just getting so excited. But then I got a little frustrated. And I'll tell you why I was frustrated. <laughs> it's because I was like, okay, God, you have revealed so much in this. and um, But how come you haven't given us the time that you're going to be back, come back? And I thought it was really interesting because... I started to read into the New Testament about what Jesus said about the last days, and it kind of hit me. And I just wanted just to say this. We are perfectly pinned on God's timeline. We are right where he wants us to be historically. And God intervenes in history. God has actually written out the history timeline. He intervenes and inter, you know, weaves this redemption story through all these kingdoms, through since time has begun, to these kings, to um, the presidents now, God has us exactly where we need to be. And I say that because in, in, in the Old Testament, God specifically gives us these prophecies of his specific days. He told Daniel, well actually Daniel was reading Jeremiah, he told Jeremiah that the Babylonian captivity would last 70 years. And as Daniel is reading through the word of God, he's having his devotions, he's searching out the scriptures, he's praying three times a day, morning, noon, and night. That's why he was thrown into the lion's den. He's walking with God, he's talking with God. He keeps God close. And he's reading one day and he's like, wait, it said 70 years. Oh, it's been 70 years. And so 70 years, perfectly pinned. And then it, the Lord gives him, hey, when the decree goes out to re restore and rebuild the walls, it's going to be this amount of time to the Messiah. And then, the, well, actually, this is, this is really funny. God reveals this to Daniel through Gabriel. And I, I think this is funny because um, Daniel is praying to God this beautiful prayer about, Lord, it's 70 years. I know. Please hear me and please see and make haste. We need to go back and um, and do something here. The, the captivity should be ending. And God sends Gabriel to him. And he comes to Gabriel. And Gabriel says, okay, well, there's 70 weeks left for the earth. And I'm sure Jenner's going, I'm talking about the 70 years of captivity. But Gabriel says, well, I'm talking about the 70, this is my paraphrase, the 70 weeks that are determined on the earth. And Daniel gets this full prophecy of of not only the Messiah coming the specific day and that, that he would be cut off, right? He gets that whole idea. And then he talks about the second coming, the last week left that we have yet to go through is a great tribulation. There's one more week determined upon this earth that has not happened yet. Now, the week that I'm talking about is a seven-year period when when Gabriel came and said the 70 weeks, it's 70 year period that is happening. And so we've already gone through the weeks. All the other weeks have already led up to 
we're down to one more week left and that's the great tribulation that's that seven year covenant that the antichrist is going to make with israel and with the world and that he will defile three and a half years into this peace peace treaty and then he's going to show himself and he's going to make all these blasphemies against god and Satan fills them, and um, this is a last-ditch effort on Satan for this time period on earth. Um, Satan does get revealed later in a millennial kingdom, unfortunately to me. I'm like, boo-hoo, why does Satan have to be revealed again? But it's all part of God's perfectly planned timeline for this earth. And so where are we? We're at the stage, and we're waiting. And I said, God, you told Daniel all these dates. And I was like, well, how come we don't know specifically, you know, the date of you coming back? And I, I just, like I said, I started reading through the New Testament and Jesus said, no one knows the date or the hour. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you're doing something different. And it's, and he uses the analogy of the bride and the bridegroom and the, the bride. Do you remember the 10 virgins that um, got their lamps? Five of them were really wise and kept their lamps full of oil and were waiting for that day. And five were foolish and just said, I'm going to go to sleep and I'll get my oil later. But the bridegroom came in an hour that they didn't know when it was midnight. And so the five wise girls had plenty of the spirit, plenty of all that they needed to go into the wedding. And the five foolish didn't have any. And so I just love that because I thought, oh, Lord. You have given all these prophets these specific to even specific days, you guys, down to the specific day. Things were done specifically. However, this period of time that we're in is the stretch of kind of like the bridal chamber. We are God's bride. And, and the New Testament talks and represents um, the church as the Lord's bride. And we're waiting and it says, blessed are those who are found waiting for the coming of the Lord. Guys, he's not going to reveal it to us because apparently in Jewish culture is what I've heard. Now, I haven't investigated this, but the groom doesn't even know the father over the groom gives the groom the signal to go get his bride. But the groom doesn't know when this is. The father gives that signal and the groom comes and get his bride so they don't even know but they have to stay ready. They have to stay prepared because it could happen at any time. And I bet some fathers are really funny because they'll be like, ha oh, ha, let's wait till midnight or ha oh, ha, let's wait till one o'clock in the morning. You know, when he's really tired or you know what I mean? Like who knows what they did, but I, I bet they made it kind of fun in a game. of being like, okay, boo boo, go get your bread. And so that's the period we're in right now. We are waiting with anticipation for the coming of the Lord. The rapture of the Lord is what I'm talking about. And then it'll make itself clear again where we are back in that timing that the Lord has. Because he said it's a seven-year timing. He gives specific dates again. I don't know how many days are to three and a half years, but it does say it. It says specifically the days that this is going to happen, specifically the day that Jesus will come down and um, will come back. So... I want to encourage you with that because what are we supposed to be doing right now when we are in the midst of, okay, First John is done and now we're waiting for Revelation to unfold, right? We're in this period. We're in the, to me, I'm like looking at it as the bridal chamber. You know, our good friends just got married in December and they waited two years to get married after the engagement and we were just all like, come on, let's just get to that day. Let's just get to the day. And the closer and the closer and the closer it was getting, you know, we're texting seven days, six days, five days. We're counting down. We're so excited. And then it was the day of the wedding. And just all of us were just so excited and, and just so full with joy to be like, this is the day, you know, that they got to get married. And so with our hearts for the Lord, I think there's a reason why Jesus says, be of good cheer, I have overcome. Because he's like, hey, there's going to be a lot of things that could go, you know, crazy in this world. But I'm coming back for you. You hang on, my bride. You prepare yourself. Make yourself ready. And um, and then John in Revelation says, you know what? Hey, everybody, just say, cry out, come. <laughs> you know, we just need to cry out, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And the, let the Father God send Jesus to come take us, rapture us out of here. 
and then um, eventually come and establish his kingdom. So I hope that encourages you as it has encouraged me because like I said, um, there is tribulation in this world. It's tough. But just like a bride goes through the things that she goes through and, and you know, cakes might change, guests and go up and down and she has to navigate through all the whole process of the wedding. She knows her heart is for her bridegroom. And so guys, keep your heart for your bridegroom, Jesus. Keep your heart for him. Wait upon him. Love on him because he's coming. He's coming back and he has got this completely mapped out perfectly. All right? So you don't have anything to worry about. And then daily when we don't know what we're supposed to do, he will guide us. Get Stay close to Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Talk to him um, every day. You know, every day consider the Lord God and, and, um, and, and get into his word and hear what he has to say to you because he wants to encourage your heart. So anyway, that is my little encouragement that I felt from the Lord for me personally, and I just want to give it out to you. So God bless you guys and hang in there. Love on the Lord, and he's going to guide us through. God bless you.